as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomenon. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. push the button and we'll see where this goes so let's say recording so we're good back with me once again is attack of the b movies johnny Patoki. hey man thanks for having me back anytime anytime so did a scooby-doo episode we've been doing plenty of other stuff i just i mean, this is the year for reviewing franchises and i just you know uh, there's universally beloved or recognized cartoons and it's like you know the Warner Brothers animation department uh, that's definitely one of the key factors if you're not going to talk Disney or Hanover Vera so uh, just or, or DreamWorks to, uh, right DreamWorks uh, Pixar a- anything and, and yeah. for hand-drawn animation you know I, I was constantly just renting the same uh, Roadrunner and Coyote and mm-hmm. Bugs and especially I had this one uh Sylvester and Tweeny just cartoons compilation VHS that was like from 90s early 2000s and that was a lot of fun <laughs> yeah. well it's funny because they're, they're like anthology movies right like they're like they're like a, oh, they, these a were cartoon just... version of like um or the Twilight Zone because each one's a standalone story oh uh, like yeah six of them in each movie and it definitely is one of many that kind of prepared everyone for just different segments and Mm-hmm. on unrelated on corresponding ones so whenever i saw a movie that didn't really correspond i was less uh, for lack of a better word annoyed i was like i just i'm so used to seeing just various tells that are all connected to one key thing and yeah they, these ones were just vhs tapes that they you know mastered five different ones and that's the whole tape you know yeah yeah i bought some laser disc ones off ebay that were like that it's like here's six cartoons but it has a name right like bugs bunny superstar yeah, or the bug, they're the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie. <laughs> like, but you, so you're expecting like a bunny picture, but it's not that. But it's still enjoyable. And it's probably got way better quality than any other remaster if it's a laser disc. <laughs> uh, they're a little outdated now, but <laughs> it's okay. cool. That, they're cheap. <laughs> they're a couple bucks, so you know. But yeah, you know. Uh, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm I'm gonna just number these ten through one and. Uh, just whatever sticks uh if you want to name one i'm cool if you want me to name one and you comment i, I can do that too i'd uh, yeah i got i mean i could I, we could go back and forth i got a couple um if you can't since there's less movies i mean we, we can also name shows ones with that were either original or cartoon block or half and right half. because because they have them divided between like box office right direct to video theatrical received re- releases sorry that's box office too um, no, all good and um, then, the comp- then the compilation ones, which were basically like, you always want to say it's like season one, season two, you know, that kind of thing, right? Exactly. Like, and then, you, then, I mean, they also had plenty of cameo roles, but we're not going to worry about that. The confusion was also because they would just retitle them or be, because they either change networks or hours. Right, right. And I just wanted to keep it fresh and new because of management. You know how these networks are, so. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, I would go with um, – if we're going to start 10 to 1, one's obviously the best one. So let's – I would go with number 10. I would put Daffy Duck's Fantastic Island. Fair enough. I watched with, that one quite a lot. I didn't like it as much as the other ones, but there's definitely some winners in there. Hence number 10. <laughs> <laughs> fair yeah, it, was, um, it wasn't horrible. 
it had a lot of good ones, like you said, but it wasn't as long as some of the other compilations either. That's true too. The the other ones do, and you know, I was watching this on Cartoon Network's Cartoon Theater, so they, oh God, I thought the it would never end. You know, a yeah, one two hour movie almost, you know, becomes what feels like two and a half. You know, it's, just, <laughs> it's technically more like seventy minutes because you know they wanted to get people in and out fast, and the shorts weren't that fast; they're each like five to ten minutes. But it is like plus. You know, then you had the 20 minutes extra of original stuff that makes them. Yeah. So that laughing in the background is my very own Tasmanian devil who decided to bust down the stairs. <laughs> he literally, hey, she literally, Taz. she literally is like Taz or animal from Muppet Babies. Oh, there or you from go. The Muppets. Hey, um, but what was nice about the, the Fantastic Island one was that it had some classic, classic ones and it had, um, sequences of animation between where he was dressed where i want to say it was daffy and speedy were very much like um ricardo montemon and um oh the guy that always said the plane the plane it's like there was like something tying them in you know yeah 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 uh, oh yeah so a uh, tivo or whoever yeah wasn't he played he was played by tweety i think uh no 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 it was i think it was i think it was um uh, no, I, I think it was um yeah. Tattoo was tattoo was speedy, yeah, you're right. What did I say? Yeah, speedy can yeah. Right. So he was kind of a combo of the two and yeah, but Daffy's kind of he's inherited the island under his yep. pretentious reason and it's just an excuse for him to just be his usual spoiled self. Um I, I think I like the premise more than I like the delivery, but it it's worth a watch. It, it's definitely worth a watch. You know, just because there's some winners in there, some classic Fritz Free Lang. And yeah, I mean, you had some pepper. It, it was a nice mix, right? You had Sylvester, you had um, that's true, Log, 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 Longhorn Link, yeah, yeah. Longhorn yeah, Leghorn, Bugs is in it, yeah. Bugs had, is in it, but he's not even in you know half the stuff, I think, from what I recall. I no, think it's like it's like one or two, and then uh, Pirate Sam, Peppy Le Pew, yeah, uh, Pirate, I mean, uh, I think Granny shows up at one point, so he's in it, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's just I, Porky's in it. Oh, he's got to be in it. Yeah, he's in the opening titles, and I think he narrates really? the section. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, it's worth a watch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the standouts, Captain Hairblower. I mean, it's Pirate Sam vs. Bugs. <laughs> come on, how can you get get along, get away from that? You're right. Louv, come back to me, Pepe Le Pew, you know. Because they were basically, it was he was um, Daffy's Island was granting their wishes. That was the cut scene, right? Just like in Fantasy Island. And uh, Yeah. I go f of rice and hen, which was with um, Prissy and Longhorn. Long bleh, bleh, bleh. I Foghorn, can't say his name. Foghorn, Foghorn Leghorn. Leghorn. It's all good. Yeah. So um, I think those three or four are the ones to go with on that one. It, it's worth a, It's definitely worth a watch. I, I definitely think this one plays better. It, it might be number two or three out of all the original yeah. movies that were released. Really? Cause... Okay. It, it's hard for me because there's, you know, when we're doing a ten, top ten list, right? So well, and but I always I mean, when you're when you're ranking any show, it's going to be hard anyway, just because <laughs> nostalgia plays into it. And it's like, well, this one might not be the better one, but I enjoy it more. <laughs> yeah, ex yeah, that's true. And so it gets even more complex. And uh, uh, I'm gonna go with number nine, uh, Tiny Toons Adventures. I. Oh, excellent watched, choice. I haven't watched this since I was like really young, like eight, nine, maybe 10. But I remember watching this uh, a lot at one of my Age cousin's house great. in Austin after Winnie the Pooh. And yeah, I I never had an issue with it. I probably, I haven't seen it ever since, but you know, the memories can retain there just because, you know, compared to what came after with Baby Looney Tunes and everything, mm -hmm. you like those, that's fine. You don't like it, that's fine. I, this one to me just having Spielberg Zamblin be the main retcon behind it and it just made Saturday mornings just so much more fun just you know if I wasn't right. watching the WB I was watching Cartoon Network and or Nickelodeon. I, I just I just wish Warner Brothers would have had the ideas for some of these ideas like some of these ideas before Disney because you had Muppet Babies and then hey Tiny Toons it's like <sighs> Tiny Toons was just as good if not better why couldn't you do it first <laughs> There's that, and I don't know, man. Uh, for lack of a better word, they really could have – they had all these ideas, but they were so 
much like all the companies, they were just so spoiled and with embracing everything, home video circuits and everything that they were just always late to the, each party and they were mm-hmm. just always bombing and just realizing, hey, we can make our money back when it, you know, bombs and goes straight to HBO. Yeah. And, you know, this is- Or before. video. I mean, they'll sell tons, tons of them on video. Home video. And yeah, I mean, even stores are starting to have it. Everyone's embracing different music and other just alternatives and geo cities. God, I love, you know, just fan sites and everything. And geo cities. Wow. Yeah. Promotion and- even if no one's seen something, they've heard of it just through other parts of the interweb, so to speak. And yeah, uh, th- this one just was made with love. I probably wouldn't laugh at it now, but I mean, there are some kickers in there. Uh, one of my friend, two of my friends were just flat out just raised on it. And it's just their absolute favorite sh- cartoon show to date. And th- they're making fun of this one. I think that one skunk that's kind of part of Peppy's family or mm-hmm. the next of kin. And mm-hmm. they're, they're at a concert and they're like, uh, what concert did you go to? Yes. No, really, what country did you go to? It's like, <laughs> and they're having to explain that to me. I'm like, no, I know who Yes is. That's my first concert from back in 06. But yeah, yeah don't, don't tell me what, I know what that means. But yeah, other people aren't going to get that, what that means, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I like that one. Yeah, that's I good. mean. Yeah, but like, yeah. Oh, hell, I'll, I'll just good. Huh. I'll, I'll, I'll go into number eight. Uh, basically, Animaniacs. I just... Ooh, now see, I was going to put them higher. Okay. Well, because the Animaniacs gave us Pinky in the Brain. That's true. I kind of did rank that higher. I'm kind of cheating. But. Right, because Pinky in the Brain is part of Animaniacs, right? And then it spun off, didn't it? Or was it always its own? No, it was part of Animaniacs, I thought, wasn't it? It, 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 was, it was both. It started out in there and they had their own. But I always kind of equated the two because I just, you know, I just all the segments just kind of interwined. You know, I was just so used to it. So, I mean. Yeah. And, the, and, the the song of the nations that was it Yakko sings oh god <laughs> it's brilliant i mean just the writing yeah. in animaniacs and the concept was brilliant you know mm-hmm. like as a kid you're like what's that giant thing with the warner brothers sign on it it's a water tower who That's... puts water in towers and then they live there instead you know yeah that that very hobgoblins <laughs> they probably were inspired by it <laughs> Oh, but yeah, Animaniacs, man, that, that touches my heart. Cam, I tell you, because I spent a lot of time watching that and uh, Pinky in the Brain. Uh, very much so. And I mean, these are one of the many cartoons where you see them just kind of embrace the real world and blend it with the real life. And I think that's why, and we'll get on to the other ones, that they all, this was just the first cartoon I'm watching where it's like you're seeing them actually come out and talk to the viewer or. Mm-hmm. They break the third the, wall. Exactly. Or fourth wall, rather. So everyone's like, "Oh, Deadpool." I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm, I've been used, to, I've been seeing that for years before mm-hmm. I even knew what it was called, breaking the fourth wall." So, do you know her? her do you know Dot's whole name? <sighs> Remember, yeah, whenever she'd say it, it was like something, something, Conchetta, Conchetta, like conchetta. yeah, and it, it was like it, it, it's my kind of humor. It's a total jerk asshole thing where some oh, it's people. Great. Are gonna, other people are going to be like, hey, other people are going to be like, <laughs> you know, just try and remember it, try and rewind the tape and yep. <laughs> name it all. And I mean, but so, I mean, I, I didn't watch so much as the show. I think they did reduce it to just shorter episodes for re- reruns by at least uh, early 2000s, definitely 2000, 2001, 02 oh, I mean, the latest. It, they eventually cut certain episodes completely because of, you know, issues with cultural yeah. well issues with cultural depictions you know there was uh, that and i mean they so did some of them you don't see much anymore i mean like you don't see a lot of peppy Le Pew stuff you don't see a lot of um yeah which in retrospect wow <laughs> and you don't see too much speedy gonzalez although i don't know too many people yeah, of someone that culture that were actually like i don't peppy. know too many people of that culture that were like upset with speedy gonzalez because they're all like because he had the uncles and cousins that would always lay there and all the people I know of that culture, and I know a decent amount, were all like, yeah, I got uncles like that. <laughs> There's that. They found it relatable as also, well, they're like, I made a bigoted joke like that. So I think it is just kind of one of those where it's just like, uh, that they were mainly just cutting just ones that were just very excessive, like just had just, even before just the blackface stuff, they were just cutting just stuff that was like, yeah, someone might take that the wrong way, or that might be a little too risque. So. Well, I think what people forget and, you know, early cartoons weren't for kids, right? Like cartoons like Betty Boop and all that. And even yeah. up through the beginning, well, because they were at the beginning of movies, 
right? There were shorts and well, who went and to see movies yeah, as adults. They, they didn't have ratings. It just wasn't a thing. It's like, right. you want to bring them, you can bring them. But otherwise, yeah. uh, but otherwise we're going to say, you might not want to bring them. So I can see where uh, along the way. I always, thought, I always thought Looney Tunes was a little more adult humor orientated, especially with the amount of shotguns and um, Wiley Coyote Roadrunner trick. Oh, stuff. yeah. It's an, Compared to like, it's say, an Disney action movie. or Jetsons or any of that. Yeah, it's it's just awesome. And Oh, agreed. I love it. But and yeah. it, it kind of just reinvigorates the off-color, uh, just silly, just lowbrow, just childish nature that everyone embraces. <laughs> it's like, yeah, gotta love it. Um, and more or less, I mean, I think it's just, it's just good to just kind of have that kind of feel, just that kind of escapism, just say, you know, people are going to get hurt, but it's all good. It's, it's not real. And yeah, yeah. I still see people, you know, it, it just always lasted more as opposed to just whatever, you know, skit show you would watch and some of the stuff would be a little too off putting or just too much. And like my daughter watches like the three stooges or Looney Tunes. I'm like, Hey, don't try that. At home. Don't try that here. She goes, duh. I'm like, well, for an eight year old, you're pretty damn smart. <laughs> because I, I guarantee you, I would have tried painting a hallway on a wall to see if somebody would have walked into it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's the same thing with, certain movies you can watch on TV and others is like, yeah, there's a reason they're showing at a later time. It's a little too mm -hmm. heavy in certain areas or gritty and some movies you can edit and some are going to be too intense despite being heavily yeah. edited. Sure. And some just only get it just cause you know, the ratings, but the violence isn't any different than an X-Files episode. And that's the other thing too. I would get into discussions. Where everyone's like, yeah, they, they would never show that on TV. I'm like, uh, yeah, they would, they would show that totally on criminal minds or, 24 <laughs> I, I always like the people that are um more on the religious side and they're always like oh you know they said god how damn. are you letting your how are you letting your <laughs> kids watch looney tunes it's so violent i'm like have you read the bible just to run it out there it's not yeah a in which in version <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of violence in some parts of that book yeah and there's so, adultery yeah I'm, and... pretty happy, yeah I'm pretty happy with them watching looney tunes <laughs> Yeah, I know everyone's got to villainize Tiny something tooth. just to give a reason for why you shouldn't yeah. watch it. And yeah, I know. Uh, and my my dad would always be like, "You you can watch James Bond, just don't watch it with your mother in the role room." So I told my daughter, "I'm like, you want to watch James Bond?" This he knew I was better, and I was had never shown any sides of just deviant or off putting behavior. So you know, he didn't. Oh, that's why you're letting it all out now, huh? Well, no. <laughs> it's just one of Kept those. Kept it all bottled up till the podcasting started. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, it, it, well played. But, yeah, it's just one of those is, like, you just trust certain people to not do stupid shit. So now it's just a matter of, like, okay, so the math humor, I'm not going to get because I fucking suck at math and I'm just not wired that way. But, yeah, there's other ones where it's like, okay, yeah, you got to be a fucking idiot if you don't get All of us know opera because of Bugs Bunny. Right. <laughs> it's... Uh, there's Sesame Street, and then there's, yeah, Looney Tunes, and I, I those were the, I'll make a confession, I, I, I did do art growing up, and I would do, you know, I think all of us of, did. Yeah, and then, then I just didn't know what I wanted to do with it, so it was kind of a skill I kind of lost. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can still do storyboards and everything, I gotta, I need that mentality, I need it, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not as 100% as where I was back, you know. <laughs> two decades ago almost so yeah oh, you really really peaked when you were 10 huh <laughs> uh, yeah uh, well even more so before that seven and eight you know i'm i still had even particular coloring books i kept around i just want my sister's kind of found that to be her hobby and later in life so it's just it's just pleasant just drawing and characterizing people and just shows you how yeah. much you want to go but yeah after doing various art classes and painting i'm like yeah now i remember why i gave this up it just wasn't it wasn't necessarily that it wasn't making any money. You liked it. A, you liked it as a hobby, not as a career. It was a hobby, and I was just like, I don't know how to make this a career. I don't think it will be a good career because of just how many people just do all the mm -hmm. art shows, and and you know, and I don't know. Just for whatever reason, film just clicked with me more because the minute I started in the mid two thousands, where people started making their own movies and funding it that was an inspiration. And then when I saw that it was actually more feasible and not a, you know, less than 50% chance, I was like, you know, I'll bite. Mm -hmm. I've always thought about it. I've always given it up because I found out, oh, it's not all fun. But now I under, you know, I'm getting too distracted by how stuck up these professors are. And I'm mm -hmm. not seeing the bright choice that this really is a fun escapade. And 
this is me. This is my, this is a passion and it can be done well because it's clicking. It's, mm -hmm. I'm getting it now. I've been for the ringer. I've embarrassed myself. Now I know, okay, now I like the challenge. Now is like, okay, this six months better be worth it. You better have something in that fucking can that you can show. And I think animators were much the same way. They're looking at it. And before it's even, you know, put on the projector, they had to instantly review saying, yep, that's a lot of ink we wasted. Yep. You know, <laughs> can't oh, use yeah. that. And so and it takes for, it takes forever back. It took forever back in the day to do an animated film because it was all hand drawn each cell. Right. It, was, it wasn't like now, you know, where you draw a couple and you can fill it has in to be this stuff. X amount of frames. And yeah. I can under and some people have been complaining about some of the DVD transfers still have some white grizzle on it. I'm like, you know, it's an older movie. Give Let it, it have it. It gives it gives it its character. To me. It makes it more appeal more to me. I'm more annoyed when it's not that old a movie and you know someone fucked up clearly you know um, so did we leave off on number eight uh number eight was um animaniacs right uh yes yeah daffy dog tiny tunes animaniacs so number seven what do you want that to be i'm gonna you know this is gonna be an odd choice i'm gonna go with new looney tunes okay it was from the last i want to say three four years I, yeah I it's on hbo know. max now yeah i didn't even know they made anything newer recently. I don't know. I, I, it really I, did come out of I stage, my, right? My, 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 my wife and kids are, are Disney fans. And I mean, they like other stuff too. Don't get me wrong. They love Scooby-Doo, mm -hmm. which is Warner, you know. Um, and so do I. But uh, I, yeah, I, I started watching it a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, wow, you know, this is pretty good. But I tell you something, Daffy's way more unstable. Like Daffy <laughs> is unhinged in a lot of these, like, Wow. <laughs> There's one where he, they think he, he crashes into, he flies into a satellite and crashes into it and he lands in Area 51 and they think he's an alien. So they want his alien secrets and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, he, he makes demands and he wants a, a hot tub full of mac and cheese. But just the way he's acting, I'm like, wow, he's acting very Joker esque. <laughs> I, lo I love this. I thought it was, I thought it was arsonist. <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was very much in line with what you would expect from Looney Tunes, right? You know, um, no, that's there were some point. things thrown in, like making lefts at Albuquerque, or you know, this means war, um, stuff like that. You know, or at least references to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it was. I enjoyed it. It I seems like, like it is bad. more old school than the other ones, which were just. I don't know. They're just too quick to rush them out instead of just kind of make sure the humor was there. It was like we need to put something out so people f don't forget. You're so right. Do it. And then yeah, stay relevant. Yeah. So that's my number. That's number seven for me. And this time I'm stealing from you because you were. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing number six. Daffy Duck's Quack Busters. Mmm. Mostly Daffy Duck episodes, but you had classics like Transylvania Six Five Thousand. Uh, you had Night of the Living Duck, Hide and Go Tweet, and uh, I think Jumpin' Jupiter was uh, had some clips on there too. That was one of the weird ones because it had like five or six actual episodes, but then there were like four clips of uh, other episodes, which was kind of kind of different. Yeah, I like the that one for me. I love the premise. I like some of the stuff actually featured, but for whatever reason two different times I was watching it. It just was always a rough sip for me, which was weird because I, I would always come in like the third part of the movie and I was really digging some of the other detective stuff that was <laughs> featured, but I, I don't know. I, I could give it another rewatch. It, I'll give it a, I could watch it again probably just because it's interesting how this was coming in like towards the beginning of the 80s and they were just... And they had episodes from the 40s, 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. 80s. The Duxorcist, that was a good one. Yeah, that, that's kind of the one that everyone remembers. It's just one of those, just like, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, no issue with it overall. It's just kind of not just totally hitting the mustard, but it, it, it serves its purpose. I, I, I can respect that one. That, that it, it did its job, so to speak. Uh, so I, I'll go with number five, uh, back in action. Back in action was better than back in action. Back in action was better than I thought. Not as good as I'd hoped, but much better than I thought it would be. Like I yeah, had you know, lofty I hopes, right? And then I'm like, you know what? I was satisfied with it. I, I thought it was good. It was enjoyable. 
I saw it in the theater, and I, you know, it was better than the last couple of Muppet movies. Exactly, man. Oh, we, we're but definitely going to do that's the one movie. thing that for some reason they just they can't seem to nail the Muppets right anymore. I take that back. They they can in short form. Uh, did you see their new TV show where they kind of yes. filmed it like the mockumentaries? I kind of hilarious. Know hilarious. It, it was a total re- tribute to Muppets Tonight in kind of a strange way, similar yeah. premise than behind the scenes of a studio. And it's like that's what they should do because that's, that's what, what I mean. The though. original they're, they're, show was yeah. Like, that's what they're that's what they're good is like little five minute segments. And when Disney, they try wrapping in an hour and a half long movie around uh, it, yeah. I'm glad Disney let that license expire because I'm just like, yeah, I do not want to see more of these bad movies because it's just everything that it's not supposed to be. Think, I don't think Disney put out a Muppet movie. Yeah, I no, think, that, I that, thought that, the that, movies were done before Disney bought. Well, them. I'm talking to the more recent, recent ones, like the last two movies they made with Jason Segel and Amy Adams. Those were under their banner, and mm. and so. Yeah. Yeah, but they seem to handle the TV stuff well enough, like the short form, like you said, the the one that's out now. Yeah, yeah, it's, and, it's pretty good. And, and the like, Swedish the Swedish Chef is hand, like I loved watching the Swedish Chef face off against Danny Trail. Exactly, and the, cele- mean, you know, the celebrity cameos were actually well timed, and in those, yeah. it's like you would see him appear, and it's like they were paid a million to do nothing for six seconds. That's just fucking stupid. Come on, you know, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, and when you're having to explain to you know kids or you know friends is like what did that represent you know when family guy does it it's kind of funny because it's just the kind of perfect randomness and there is just like mm-hmm. i i really don't know what that had to do with anything and it's not even even if i don't get it it's just not funny and right and you know it's not a space ghost kind of thing where it's like i'm not the, who, sure who the celebrity is but it's hysterical seeing them react to this cartoon and mm-hmm. and that's and that's how the new one is when, when kerman interviews people absolutely it's, 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 it's much more like that so mm-hmm. i was and um i know we're supposed to be on looney tunes but i will say the new muppet babies is enjoyable like i have kids and they like it and it's not it's not bad either and they'll I throw muppets in the occasionally that growing up when i was yeah. one but uh i'll take yeah, same for it yeah, I'll, it's I'll, not bad. I'll, I'll give it a go so number five what was the one uh, you put uh, no, no no uh that, that that was back in action yeah back in action okay uh i did did you see this in the theater or you saw it you're part of the I, Netflix I saw it on video. Yeah, I saw okay. it. I saw it on video. Dude, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm 10 years older than you. <laughs> I, I know. I didn't, I didn't know if you I'm saw part of the Netflix or... having the rent DVDs, copy them, and send them back generation. Oh, that that's fine. I'm, my, my, <laughs> I, I know my father never saw this, but you know, my I saw it with my uncle and my mother, and my uncle bought the DVD, and we watched it endless times. No, I'll take that back. Just three times. but And then after a while, I just stopped. I kind of just stopped watching it because my sister wanted to watch it every other day. I'm like, now you're making it on fun. When you watch something too much, it's mm-hmm. not fun anymore. You know, you, and so I'm, I'm one of those guys. I like to watch it like maybe once a week, once a month, you know, <laughs> yeah. endless amounts but, of time. But it's not bad. It's not, it was nice seeing Brendan Fraser too. I like Brendan Fraser. Yeah. And we've talked endlessly, coincidentally on other episodes, how Joe Dante did not like working on this, but you know, it's not one of those where you can tell, you know, he was so hampered, you know, that mm-hmm. nothing good came out, you know, that there's right. not, there's not much suckage. Now, obviously, it, compared to some of the other ones, which were trying to just too quickly just sign up the first radio hit band, they picked mm-hmm. a lot of surprising indie music. And I, you know, everybody, mm-hmm. show your moves. I forget the name of that band. They were the featured in credit song, that band that did that song. And yeah, it was kind of cool that they were trying to like, and they didn't do much of anything after like oh seven oh eight. And I'm like, okay, but it, it doesn't feel dated. That's the weird part. And everyone else is just like they would, yeah, just jump on the first thing that hit them. Um, you know what? I'll go with number four. Go ahead, Animaniacs, Wacko's Wish. That I've seen yeah. this more than I've seen the actual show. I just. I just saw it a lot. It was even heavily promoted on every Warner Bros. Mm-hmm. home video ad. And I just have to say, just for a Christmas themed thing, this isn't cringeworthy. I mean, when they're. No, so many times Christmas things are just done like bad. Exactly. And this was actually very pleasant. It, it, it doesn't copy the, you know, it doesn't really even copy the Christmas Carol for the bit of time or, you know, it's a wonderful life. It just goes straight into, you know, he's got these wishes and he has to learn how to use them. I'm like, that's mm-hmm. fine. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. everyone else, Disney and everyone else, again, they just had to have, you know, Scrooge McDuck or something. I'm like, no, let's just, please, just 
stick with an original storyline. And I mean, they're singing, but it's not cringing. And that's so weird because that was back when I just couldn't stand certain singing segments of something, mm-hmm. you know, unless it was Disney for whatever reason. I, I don't know why. Just, I, I give well because I give them credit. When it comes to musical numbers, they 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 do a fantastic job. Well, and and then they're kind of they have a history of it, right? Like all the way back before Mary Poppins, even. Oh, I mean. absolutely. And they're interjection comedic segments, so it's working. And you know, much yeah. like Tenacious D is both a comedy mm-hmm. and a metal band. You know, it's just with this, you know, it just it's it really is just you're seeing the love on screen. And even though it's oh, fucking wacko, you know, <laughs> the third. Uh, of the trio of the third of the Marx brothers yeah yeah and all of them get lots to do and i think that's what's cool you know it's just and i always liked how everyone was drawn how you know there's uh, there's like some new exclusive characters in this too and it's not Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel last minute and tnt so often you know sister channel would fall victim to this half the time and this one you know it really is well ironed you know i think it premiered it premiered on home video and then it you know uh, Cartoon Network played it endlessly, and sometimes at not even the most Christmas times, that was the even bigger kicker. And it's like, you know, I don't mind that. That's actually pretty cool, as opposed to seeing mm-hmm. something like Home Alone on ABC Family for the billionth time. You know, this is yeah. I can never, I can never get enough of National Lampoon's Christmas, vaca- Christmas Vacation. Though <laughs> I think it's the most realistic portrayal of family Christmas. I mean, it's exaggerated, but it legitimately is. The, there's always that old lady that can't see or doesn't know what she can't hear. I there's think Die Hard is oh. the most realistic Christmas movie. <laughs> it's Die right. Hard's only a Christmas movie because it's a Christmas party. I I'll know. I know. Die, Hard just, Die, Hard, Die Hard 2 qualifies as a Christmas movie then, too, because he was flying to see her on Christmas or vice versa. Yeah, and I think even part five, it's snowing in one segment. So <laughs> it's it's isn't, it, isn't it just because they're in Russia and it snows there all the exactly. time? Exactly. <laughs> Oh no! Christmas vacation, I think is because, like, if I had Christmas here, that's what would happen. And it had an all-star cast. It had, the little old lady was actually the original voice for Betty Boop. Yeah, and see, that's that was the time of Warner, where it's like, regardless of whether you like the movie or not, I liked how it was just so common that you would see all these voice actors like June Foray or even yeah. Bill Blake make a cameo in some of these yep. movies. I'm like, that's awesome! Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, this gives it a more a bigger timelessness because now. You can bring your grandfather who's used to stuff from the 40s and 50s to watch it, and he'll mm-hmm. at least so I'll know it. Me. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal number three from you, and I kind of oh, think oh snap! I think this one might I think this one should maybe be higher, but I'm gonna throw it out there because this one contains so many of the great shorts there was the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie. Oh, perfect! I thought it was gonna be number one, but that's fine. No, that's great. Oh, you see. <sighs> I, the top three are tough because there's three excellent choices. And <laughs> this one is so great because this one you, you have, um, the, it's, it's the, it shows Marvin, the Martian, duck Dodgers, Robin Hood, Daffy. Absolutely. I've seen it the um, most times because Alibaba. it's that, it's that uh, universal. It has something for everybody. Uh, Yosemite uh, Sam is heavily what's featured. What's opera doc? The uh, opera right. one, you know, I mean, there, and then, and then there's clips from all the other, so many other, other great ones. And so it's it's, just, it's also just the it was the first one out and it, at least and it, it was just the most layered. It really yeah. I think there was one before it, but yeah, my bad. There wasn't much on it. I mean, it didn't have any of the ones I would consider like like the the classics, right? Like yeah, what's well, cooking doc? Yeah, that one's in the first one, and that's great. But, absolutely and this oh man, one this, this one this one is like the ultimate greatest hits of Looney Tunes. that's exactly why it works and it, it doesn't drag they, they chose the most prompt ones and the main actual new animation that for the movie also works you know it is just yeah. as equally well done you literally cannot tell and that's just something to be said because some of the other ones is like they would just kind of just be moving awkwardly even though no, they were it, using, even though they were using some of the same cells it's just there was some they would have mm-hmm. some new exclusive scenes or mm-hmm. the voice tones would be different. So I was like, yeah, no, it's not chilling. And this one, I'm just as interested in, you know, the you know both title characters, but I also just like how, like, it starts more kind of upbeat and then just goes to slapstick and then ends just kind of explosively. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's close you, this out. You got Fast and Furious, or Furious, rather. Right. You have uh, To Beep or Not To be. It, 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 granted, it's Bugs and Roadrunner Heavy, but it says it right in the title. And that is that's what but, you're going to expect. But but the fact that Duck Dodgers and Robin Hood Daffy and Duck Amuck are all in it, exactly. You know, they, they definitely spread the love a little bit. 
Because those but, are really the top three protagonists, quote unquote, for lack of a better way of putting it. Really so, because I mean, there'd be even times of this where I kid you not, I would see the movie because be on in an afternoon or an evening after they'd already shown, you know, and coincidentally some of those same cartoons in the earlier days. It's like, no, that's fine, you know. Oh, I can watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> it, and I used to know a few people who had a few different VHS clamshells. I, you know, I rented from the videos of mom and. I used to go to this Kroger and there was a video rental store inside there, which had a bunch of FYE entertainment, you know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but there was a video store next to it. And I think we even had a few tapes and we got to keep them because, you know, the store went out of business. business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you're going to get, after to hear this, you're going to get a bill. Oh yeah. Just always fun memories and nostalgia. Can rewind. Totally. And back when you couldn't tell half of the stuff, whether it was theatrical or not, it was like, you're going to rent it one way or the other. <laughs> and I missed that. And nowadays you get that at the red box. I'm like, N- yeah, quarter of these definitely never went to a theater and I'm not renting them, you know, unfortunately, because the posters suck that there just is no care put into the promo mm-hmm. material. They're take, they're clearly taking half-assed screenshots. And it's like, no, you need to put equal effort into the advertising. In fact, most of the budget should go to the advertising. So that way people actually see it. <laughs> yeah. And the people don't seem to realize that like, well, I take that back. B-movie companies have realized that if they copy the film, the big name film's uh, advertisement, they'll get people renting theirs by accident. <laughs> yeah, is that, well, exactly. Uh, uh, but put Ouija or Blair Witch or uh, mm-hmm. something in the title, Exorcism, someone's going to rent that mm-hmm. eventually. Just to see if it's bad or so, just to see if it's good. So, uh, so I, but, just, I just Amazon searched for the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie and um, they don't really have it. They have. They, it says the bugs when that you have it where you can rent it or buy it digitally. But I want it, and it says. Uh, uh, did you check eBay? I haven't gotten there yet. We're, we're recording a podcast. Uh, <laughs> bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie on VHS is forty nine ninety five. Oh my god, it's a collector's item. So yeah, no shit. Let me check. Uh, let me check eBay. A hundred best Warner Brothers film collection two forty six. But I'm scrolling through and I, I'm going through all the because I typed in Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie. And all of a sudden I see Popeye. I'm like, no. And then I'm like, at the very bottom, it. I'm like, I don't know how that falls in. Yeah, just like YouTube. That's, a weird, that, that's really weird, uh, Amazon. Yeah, is there a Bugs Bunny cameo in those movies? I, I think not. Oh, okay, that'd, be hilarious. So, that'd be hilarious. He's, he's, he's standing next to uh, Pennywise in the store. Yeah, I took a, I took a wrong turn, turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> there you go. We'll return after these messages. Hey. Feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try... They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure-All. Sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation. We have Italian horror. We have zombies. We have slashers. We have crime films. We have spaghetti westerns. We even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! As needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, Cure What Ails Ya. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Hey, I heard you like movies. I heard you like to hustle. I heard you like podcasts. Well, guess what? There's a podcast for you out there called The Home Video Hustle. Damn right. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I put a bunch of movies in a bag, and PJ picks one out at random. And then we just watch it. We talk about it for maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Whatever we feel like doing, wherever the conversation leads us. But do we actually talk about the movie? Most of the time. Ah. Tangents galore. Yes. So believe me, we may be a movie podcast, but it's not always about movies. We might talk about video games. Mm-hmm. Music. music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the big one, music. <laughs> uh, sometimes we might get a little bit of politicalness in there. Yes. Sometimes we may just, oh, we know what we like to do. We like to tell stories, PJ. Ah, yes. I am the master storyteller <laughs> yes. of the podcast realm. 
undefeated. So if you like to hear about movies, video games, whatever foolishness comes to our mind, the most random stuff you can think of, check out the Home Video Hustle. You can find us on the Stitchers. Yes. The Google Play. Yes. Apple Podcasts. What else? Podbean. What else? Podcast Addict. Goddamn. All that. Ain't no reason you can't get your hustle on. We everywhere. Worldwide, baby. Hustle motherfucking hustle. Hey, we can't cuss in the promo, PJ. Ah. We gotta be family friendly. There may be podcasts out there that don't want us here to say, ah. Yeah, yeah, all that good fun stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't, don't run the listeners away, Pete. Ah, I'm sorry. But this is going kind of long. Yes. So we'll end this and say, hey, check out the Home Video Hustle every Friday on all the various podcast outlets. Peace. Peace. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. If you take two old punk rockers who are past their prime, put them in front of a movie screen and give them a podcast, and what do you get? Cinema punks. Cinepunks. It's the mixtape of movies. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked. Crude. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. It's late, it's tired, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love your movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes a gratuitous movies It's time to get busy with your friend Steven Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com We now continue with our program. Okay, so eBay, if you want <laughs> the classic 98 uh, VHS clamshell, which I saw promoted nonstop. You can get that for, you know, eight to nine bucks. Or oh, you can go eight to nine bucks on eBay. Or, oh, that's not bad. Or you can, that would definitely be my preferred method just because I'd want to see the previews and, you know, uh, just see it the way it was.
technically mostly seen for most. Uh, or you can do the three dollar, you know, original VHS print, which I'm surprised. I think that'd be higher because that's not going to be at any rental store. I saw no, this maybe be. at one rental store when they, and it was like the backup copy or something. <laughs> remember when? Do you remember when VHSs would first come out? They wanted seventy bucks a tape. And they're yes, like, oh, it's, it's made for a rental store, so it holds up better. I'm like, I don't exactly. think exactly. It was a conflict of interest. They didn't want you to have it, and you know, and even just ordering it through the catalogs, which is oh yeah, with clamshell, with clamshell, nine ninety forty bucks, yeah, and God, memories, baby. So I'm gonna go with number two. Um, oh yeah, we're still recording, aren't we? <laughs> that's all good. <laughs> Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't expect that. Uh, you know, because. I think it was, I tried watching it a, but, a bunch, and I wasn't so able to. Uh, I always had issues when... Because when it come on after Animaniacs on the WB, and that's yeah. where it really puzzled me, because most of the sites where you could find info on it didn't have info on it. They only had info on the classics, you know, up till the 80s. Yeah. And so that's where it confused me. I'm like, are any of these classic guys involved? And it's like, no, it's clear they're not involved. But June Foray is still doing the voice of, you know, mm -hmm. Tweety and Granny, so... It was cool, you know, and I always just, I would watch Tom and Jerry, but I always just resonated with Sebastian and Tweety. Like, I guess Did you if know you... Tom and Jerry when they became friends? <sighs> like, I liked it when they were frenemies. You know? Because, like, Tom never, re like, it never really seemed like he really wanted to kill him, but he would, get, he playful, would get near there. But it was more, yeah, but when was, they became, like, buddies, it was kind of like, eh. My my issue, I guess, with Tom and Jerry is Tom just half the time was just an idiot. So I felt sorry for when you know he got beat up, or and, especially when it was especially when it was something he didn't really do. But there were oh, lots of times exactly, Jerry would set yeah. him up for something just because. And then it's like like when he was when he was wearing a zoot suit trying to get the girl. <sighs> yeah, he was being all Pepe Le Pew at the time. But then he, would to make it even more complicated, then it got even more complex how he would sometimes talk or everyone else would talk, but he wouldn't talk. I'm like, I'm confused. So yeah. like Pink Panther, that it was hit and miss for me, but it was good Hanover Bear. I, I definitely watched it the most, even definitely more than whatever Yogi Bear special or, you know, Scooby-Doo and Flintstones, but Flintstones and Scooby-Doo are definitely my top, but this one. Oh, I can, I can get the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie on LaserDisc for a hundred dollars. <laughs> get it. <laughs> yeah, so. I'll, yeah you have my email address send me a hundred bucks <laughs> and now now you got to find your laser disc player again um it's, it's sitting right here it's up now. oh okay perfect um <laughs> i have a whole ev room man i got i got i got well, i don't have the v i don't have the v VH, vhs hooked up yet because it's at the other house but. there you go so sylvester Dude, and tweety that came no. on after you know just reruns of other shows that the wb would show but they would it was interesting come... watching watching them work together that's why i liked it and I always just liked Sylvester and Tweety because both of them were talking uh -huh. and Sylvester, you know, I'm more connected to him because he's talking and sometimes talking to the viewer. And I just knew that he had the smart, maybe not the smarts, but the charisma of Bugs Bunny. And he was like the coyote where I'm fine with him getting blown the fuck up, you know? And, um, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of bumbling the coyote. Yeah. Uh, okay. So according to Wikipedia, yeah, this I definitely recall it around oh one. That sounds so, about right. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. and then the and the final episode aired on Cartoon Network. So yeah, there you go. It was being syndicated and it was already past me. I wanted a little more mature stuff, so I stopped watching it when it's syndicating from until at least oh four, maybe oh six on rare occasions, but m more more likely on Boomerang. So the first season was released. They didn't release the other four seasons, but so this apparently started back in 95. So that explains it, why it had a lot of more typical animation. For whatever reason... Yeah, I, remember, I, thought, I remember it from the late 90s. So when you said 2001, I was kind of like, well, I think that was a little earlier, but... Yeah, that, that's, that's just it. I got into it more like, yeah, from at least 98. Interesting side note, because side note, Frank Welker did a lot of the voices, and he's who does Freddy in Scooby-Doo. Exactly, and Scooby -Doo. yeah. Yeah, we're talking Transformers now, but, and yeah, yeah and just the Predator. So there you go. And just every other alien voice. So yeah, he, oh. he's a badass. And then that, that's cool. Uh, I did not expect him to do the voice, but uh, I, it just, it just showed me how this, if it wasn't Bugs and, you know, Daffy and, you know, Coyote and Roadrunner or even Taz, you know, these guys definitely were the most resonating because they're kind of a family, you know, they're trying to kill each other and get, 
if you think about it, they're kind of a brother and sister. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so it's just, yeah, always a fun time, cool opening credit. And so, yeah, that makes sense. So I definitely recall it 98, 99. And then I well, the final it, episode, the final episode didn't air to 2002. So the final episode contained the segments, a tall end and this is the end never aired on kids. WB remained unaired until 2002 when the show aired in reruns on cartoon network. There you go. And it's interesting. I wonder why they, they did have it on at a crappy time. And I think it's just cause by six or seven, you got to go to school. So yeah, I, was definitely always trying to just watch Five this. Five seasons and 52 episodes, though. That's pretty good. Although yeah. the last se- although season two had eight episodes and five had five, so. <laughs> but it was like 13, eight, 13, 13, five. So it's kind of like, It's yeah. definitely one that is underappreciated. And so that's, that's why I rank it higher. But more or less, I just, I don't know why it hasn't gotten future releases. Because I think it did pretty good in the ratings on Cartoon Network. So. It went on longer than I expected, and at the same time, it went on earlier. So yeah, if it's starting in '95, so damn, that's half the. Yeah, 90s but to be fair, like it says, racing cable. It says like, season five, September 18th. For, originally aired September 18th, 1999. Last aired. Oh, that's yeah. the syndication number, right? No, that no, that would be yeah, 18. So it like some of them span like more than a year. It seemed like. So yeah, they a weird way they had it on. They didn't have a high emphasis or interest in it. But, which is surprising because of how many years it was. You'd think you'd want to make some money back one way or the other. People would pay out the ass for something like this. Just I mean, this, is, this is when they were definitely trying to not have bugs and everything. They were trying to really, you know, yeah, because the other because Porky wasn't in it, Wiley wasn't in it, Roadrunner wasn't in it, Bugs out wasn't of all really in the it. Bad decisions that Warner Daffy Brothers made, wasn't in it though. Exactly, Warner Brothers is trying to embrace all these other things, and unlike other franchises, they're not trying to rely on just one actor or one mm-hmm. character to sell or justify the whole franchise. So, <laughs> yeah, Batman. Or, or Which I love Batman, but uh, well, Marvel's the same way. Kind of for a while, I only knew him Iron for Spider Man, or yeah, or even Iron Man and Hulk cartoon. So there you go. And so with this, yeah, that oh, cartoon wise, yeah, Spider Man. Uh, I, I mean. Oh, I always, yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to be close to them one way or the other because as much as I watched all the other stuff, you know, and I watched classic uh, Marvin the Martian and, you know, Duck Dodgers mm-hmm. couldn't mm-hmm. couldn't stand the newer cartoons and I know everyone else loved it and I, I had other family members who liked watching it because, you know, Tom Jones would do the narration and voice o- and opening song and for me, it was just like, yeah, no, just past its prime at that point for me. It's not funny, but uh, that this one... I think just bridge the gra- the the gap, just still keeping it pretty, mm-hmm. you know, they already are doing the stuff for the minor audience and, you know, Animaniacs audience and Tiny Toons, but then to have them even go a step further and just say, hey, we're going to talk about the other family that's most popular is like, you know, you know, it's just had that kind of just universal appeal. You You recognize them instantly, you know. Uh, Tweety's funny he's like bugs in a way and you know uh, Sylvester is just you just want to mm-hmm. see it, it's just so fascinating seeing someone who thinks he's that good and you want to see if he'll actually catch the bird so it's just awesome and sometimes it's not even about eating sometimes it's just about them scolding each other's like I need you to come back to granny <laughs> yeah yep. <laughs> you left your cage I was told to guard you which why would you let a cat guard a bird it's stupid but it's it works for a cartoon hey, granny, so. by this point granny was up there a little senile and it's kind of funny. I think, in a way, they kind of play her up like Angela Lansbury on Murder She mm-hmm. She's like that head private eye. And did you ever did you ever hear the theory that they that Angela that Angela Lansbury's character on Murder She was actually the real murderer of everybody? I know, but that I would buy it. I like that story. I gotta look cause... it up and I'll send it to you. But I had heard that there, that somebody. So it's funny, like nowadays everyone has a fan theory they're like this is what it means it's like no why don't you ask the person that wrote it what it means some of them are actually pretty good like that one i was like oh that's one of those where you would actually like to see believe it to be true because you know no one died as a result it's just kind of playful and fun you know adventuresome like magnum pi which it crossed over with you know it's just one of those i love that show oh yeah where we oh i still want to be i still want to be tom Selleck. If I if I I still want to be making the PI, I wouldn't even wear those shorts. I don't know I how think, they look on me since I have the potato, the the body shape of a potato with toothpicks. Really. I think everyone would because he's a cool guy. But just racing around Hawaii in a Ferrari with a oh, Hawaiian no, shirt on. I'd like to even meet the whole crew because that that was oh, a whole well, family. Who was the guy with the helicopter? TJ. 
Yeah, yeah. TJ you gotta, cool. gotta, you gotta hang out with TJ. Yeah, TJ and uh, uh, Hank and and just all the other guys. Yeah, they, they'd be awesome. And so I think that's also why I like this. This was always an adventure. There was no set storyline. There was nothing that you had to keep track of. There, they were. Go- I do recall them going to various parts of like Bulgaria or Russia or whatever, mm-hmm. and then Hawaii type places. And it was the change of scenery. That's why it works. And it really just. It was just the last time that I, and cause see, they did another cartoon that's the f- third to last year in 2000 called Tweet is High Flying Adventure. And despite liking the trailers, I didn't really. Yeah, it didn't really take off either. I didn't care for that movie. And yeah, it, it didn't do as well as some of the other recent movies around that time. You know, they more people were keen on renting the classics. And this one, you know, it, I, there's got to be a fan base for it out there. I haven't looked at any forums, but I'm sure people were videotaping <laughs> this. We know what because, you're doing after this. Uh, yeah, there you go. And that's the thing. I, on occasions, I would see it aired later in the day, and I'd be confused. I'm like, oh, are they? You the know, minute you said it, it completely clicked, and I'm like, I know which one. I know what show this is. Exactly. It just it had that universal appeal. The formula was still there. The effort was still there. It looked. You could, if you weren't so adept, you would suspect it was still done, maybe in parts of the '60s or '70s. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know like, like some of the specials at least and it just the the formula is still there clearly these guys you know were breathing the same air and so they it, it displayed on screen it never got boring even if you'd seen the same episode before you might have just seen the last part and said you watch it again just was never repetitive it general likability just general interest just the diversity was the star and just to wrap it up so i don't max out all our minutes on the zoom call but i, I really uh, I, it would just be funny because you know you, cartoon network used to just always just throughout early 90s and 2000s just start off the day you know from five or six in the morning you're gonna see endless cartoons and then by you know maybe 10 maybe afternoon even you know they're gonna stop and show something else you know yeah. like tom and jerry or maybe even just the yep. cartoon theater and so they can show one of the land before time movies so for this yeah. it was interesting just because yeah, I would see that later in the afternoons, especially on a day where I was sick at home, just, you know, drinking soda and just staying, just watching whatever crap was on, you know, and yep, yep. and they would have these on in the afternoon, sometimes later afternoon when you get home from school after three or four. And it was interesting, you know, just because I would think, oh, wait, you know, for a minute each time it never fell. I'm like, wait a minute, are, are they showing, you know, the classics? I was like, no, they're not showing the classics, but it's just as good as the classics. It's just pretty close, yeah. It's as close as they're ever gonna get. <laughs> just... So number one, what yeah, I think the... this, is this gonna cause an argument? I wonder. No, uh, is it space... I'm, not sure. it, it, is it I'm space... going Space Jam. I, I'm gonna go with Space Jam too, and see. I know other people who are gonna fight me on that too, because well, first off, it's the only one at the theater that made money, because le- back in action had a budget of eighty million, and worldwide made sixty eight. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So Space Jam had a budget of eighty million, made two hundred and thirty million. It's I, ranked eight hundred and twelfth all time domestically. Well, after I'll, all these years, that's pretty solid. I'll go even further. It it's just good. <laughs> it's good. A lot of people bash it now because they're not f- fond of the old school rap music or Michael Jordan. You know what? Screw that. You know, I don't Michael, even recognize. Michael Jordan the changed the game, man. I mean, he I thought it was cool. Uh, I w- I even saw parts of it. I think occasionally on VH1. You know that they Danny DeVito was in it. Come on, and I know exactly. Ivan Reitman was originally attached to it, and then he left because you know, it, it creative differences. But his impact, I think, that's the general likability. It had that Ghostbusters feel, and I mean, Bill Murray's in it, and so that that makes it in general. I, I connect with this way more than Roger Rabbit. Nothing against Roger Rabbit. It's just I like the I, noir style of it, but yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly. Uh, the, the noir and the adventure and just all the other cameos make the movie for me rather than the actual main story. I, I guess for me, for this, I, I just like just the whole, they're playing basketball, but they're not really playing basketball. They're, you know, setting up traps. It's like, it's like watching the Harlem Globetrotters. <sighs> right? Like the Harlem Globetrotters playing the Washington, whatever they were, the generals or whatever. The Globetrotters, oh, like watching the Scooby Doo episode with the Globetrotters where he's on a forklift and dunks. And my, totally. my, my thing is, like, I grew up in the 90s, not grew up, but I was a teenager in, let's see, so I was born in, yeah, I was probably 20 in 2020. No, I can't be right. I was 23 
So throughout the late 80s and early 90s, I, I, I always get in this discussion with people, and I'm like, look, that was like the golden age of basketball because the game was changing constantly. New players with new techniques. Michael Jordan came out. Every team had like two or three uh, superstars. Yeah. Not like now where like one team's got nine superstars. And, you know, I mean, this movie had Michael Jordan. It had Bill Murray. Shaq's got to be in it, right? It had Charles Barkley, Sean Bradley, Patrick Ewing, Larry Johnson, Muggsy yeah. Bogues. Muggsy Everybody's Bogues, who was like literally like one of the smallest dudes in basketball and could dunk. Aren't Larry there some Johnson, ESPN guys who make Johnson. cameos? Yeah, uh, Tom Barry's in it. Then there was even the voice cast. was. Oh, then there were other players. Uh, Danny Ainge, Steve Kerr, Alonzo Mourning, Horace Grant, AC. This is like a who's who. Yeah, yeah. The they, big players, Charles Oakley, Luke Longley. Derek yeah. Harper, Vlade Divac, I mean, Jeff Malone. It, the list just keeps going. And then awesome. those were all cameos. Absolutely. And uh, But, yeah, Ahmad Rashad and Jim Rome were the announcers. Dan Castellana and Patricia Heaton were in it. I mean. Uh, and did Fred Tata – oh, yeah. So you, you just said Fred Tata score. Yeah. Uh, what Wasn't he in there? Fred who? Fred, Fred Tata score. He's another voice actor who's pretty well known in the voice. Voice community. cast. Let's see. Billy West, Billy West as the, Bugs Bunny, uh, and, and you know the, a the, Futurama fan. Oh, fame. Well, exactly. Bradley Baker, Danny DeVito, yeah, Brad, uh, Disney Bill Star Farmer. Wars, yeah, yeah. Ma- uh, voice veteran uh, Bradley's in there. But I mean, this definitely made me accept Billy West as like, you know what, I'm cool with him. Billy, the guy you mentioned, I don't see listed. Frank Welker was in it. Oh, uh, okay, so I might have heard his voice, but yeah, th- there's lots, lots of classic, you know. I, I definitely made their career because. You're widely seen, so you have more time to catch up on all the different voices. But I just dug just compared to any other movie or show where it combined a version of the real world with an animated world, it did it pretty solidly because it just wasn't well, I mean, it wasn't it, heavy handed. It was yeah. and I know a lot of people complain about that because they just want to see that. You know, I I if I had to watch it now today, I would still be fine with animation. It tells I would the love story. watching that again. Yeah. It's the right mixture. And it, and of, it is Ivan Reitman, FYI, is, who was one of the producers. I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like he was attached and then just left the director's chair. But, you know, because it, it wasn't. Yeah, it was directed by Joe, Pit, by Joe Pitka, so that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, but, I mean. Yeah. I watched this a lot with other family and other stuff. And it took me actual multiple viewings to actually watch the end credits scene. Because I, 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 I thought it ended I mean, there, but yeah, once you get past the silly R. Kelly stuff, they, it shows up at the end and it's actually worth the wait. And uh, unlike other stuff, you know. Well, you, Fly Like an Eagle was made famous again. Absolutely. There, there's oh. that. We, we, and it was a pretty good, a pretty damn good version of it too. Pretty much. And uh, it kind of has a running man Mortal Kombat kind of feel to it, for lack of a better description. Obviously. Mixed, I think, with, mixed with the Harlem Globetrotters. Exactly. It, it, it just that whole. This is the ultimate show. No one's gonna die, but it is just. The oh, Rotten Monsters. Tomatoes only gives it a forty-three percent approval. Proof yeah. again. I don't agree with people that think they're critics. Well, what's the audience score? It's gotta be higher. It doesn't say. I, I'm on Wikipedia. I'm oh yeah. Grading a five out of ten. Come on. Space Jam was fun to watch. Of oh, course, no. when when Roger e, when Roger e, when Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel both give a movie thumbs up, that's impressive. <laughs> Ebert yeah. gave the film three and a half stars. Yeah. It's a marriage of good ideas. Oh, three he films for the price of one, giving us a comic treatment of the career adventures of Michael Jordan, crossed with a Looney Tunes cartoon, and some showbiz warfare. Yeah. I, I, I know not every. Yes, it's a commercial. Yes, it's a special, basically. And what well, was based oh, off what? commercials? It was based off Nike commercials. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's... Bugs and Michael did the commercials together. Exactly. Yeah. So it's by the director of Bad. <laughs> And I have no problem with them doing a sequel with LeBron James because if it wasn't for Michael Jordan, like who I still think is the, it's hard to say who's the greatest, right? Because the game changes in his prime. Would he still be able to take on these newer guys in their prime who learn by watching him and know what he does? Mm -hmm. Who knows? But for sure at that point in time, as a Chicago Bulls fan and a Chicago guy, he was the greatest of all time. And he, I think he'd still be far above average if he played an NBA in his prime right now. (laughs) <laughs> so i don't have a problem with well i mean there's you know think you know i don't have a problem with a sequel being made with you know lebron james he's the guy he's the they waited too and, late and, but they, and, they with, and, with kobe, anyway. and with kobe bryant dead see to me kobe bryant was always like the second coming of jordan he 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 changed his game the same way when he got to a certain age he couldn't drive the lane he, he perfected his fadeaway jump shot the way michael did you know 
So Fair I enough. loved watching Kobe. And then when I, when Kobe died la- earlier this year or last year, I was just, it, it, you know, it's funny for somebody I never met that I was kind of like, wow, that, I was really bummed by that. Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> so I don't mind them remaking it with LeBron. I think it's cool. Let, let's see what some of these new guys do that are going to be in it. You know, I mean, but this he, one was basically a... the dream team. This was basically the dream team from the Olympics. Yeah, it's by Ryan no. Cogler, who I'm hit and miss on. I like Creed, uh, Fruitvale Station's a classic. Uh, Black Panther, not so hot on. But so this is gonna, either way, this is going to be a mercenary job for him. But I'm sure it'll be. I think I saw, uh, uh, what's her name from Us and uh, oh, you know the you know the t- the technical achievements of the first one at the time too. I mean, it used digital. Yeah, you're seeing you shadows digital, and yeah. layers over everybody. Digital 2D animation, break, background layers. It was done on paper. It was scanned. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it was using Cambridge animation systems. I mean. It really is well polished. And even though you know, you know, it's added it in. It still looks good, too, to this day. Absolutely. And uh, so Metacritic, who I often go more because they actually read the fucking reviews, uh, gives it a 59. Audience score for that is a 6.9 out of 10. But. Uh, that, that, I, that I would go with. It, it's not an Oscar-winning masterpiece, although I don't know for most of those. But it's a solid, fun movie. It's easily a six or seven out of ten. It might be at least for me. It's maybe more of an eight. But I, you know what? A controversial opinion. I would give it an Oscar for the best animated picture that year. <laughs> what, what else was out? I don't think that's controversial at all. First of all, but, what, what else? I think, what, I think I would go with that. Name an animated movie that came out in '96 that was better than Space. <laughs> so, uh, well, one best song for uh, I believe I can fly. Oh, okay. You know, it was it won uh it won a Grammy for that. It won for me. It was best, always... best individual achievement, technical achievement for, for the Annie Awards, best animated feature, best. I mean, it it won a few awards. For me, it would be the opening. You know, it's time to jam, and then even just the workout scene because I heard that one constantly on Radio Disney. But this one, you know, there was supposed to be a sequel that I was. There were supposed to be two or three sequels compared to very most, which disappointed you, they didn't make exactly. But I mean, compared to most. There is an actual story underneath it, and yeah, there is. it's cool seeing, for me, they pretty much put him as a superhero. I mean, this wasn't Meteor Man bad. It wasn't even cheesy like that. No, it was, far better than, it was far better than that. Yeah, totally. And it was just really odd. And I started picking up on it. I never, I started noticing how Yosemite and Fudd are dressed like Vincent and Jules from Pulp Fiction in one moment. I never saw that mm-hmm. the first few times, because, I mean, how could I? You know, I'm six when this came out, so... Watched the endless amounts. I forget who bought the videotape for me, but I, I was surprised I didn't wear it out. I watched it a shit ton. I still have the video. I have a blockbuster. I have the blockbuster previously viewed videotape of it. <laughs> so there you go. It's. I, I miss did. blockbuster because I used to go there once a month and I'd look at all the movies that were coming out, new ones, and I'd probably buy two or three, and I'd go home and watch <laughs> movies. Now and it's not. It doesn't seem as much, like now. There's so many to choose from on Netflix. By the time I pick one, it's time to go to bed. Absolutely, and I mean, there's there's a giant plus to digital distribution, but a giant negative. Absolutely, uh, it it's just one of those you, you know you're gonna. Oh, Jordan to... wouldn't Jordan wouldn't star in the sequel. So that's why they canceled it. You know, and I, I can respect that. At the time, there didn't seem like a need, and now I'm. Well, they also this... came. So they also had the idea for one called Spy Jam that was going to have Jackie Chan, but that became the basis for back in, <laughs> that became the basis for Looney Tunes back in action. I would have seen that, even though I would have still been watched that. Fuck, oh even yeah, though... there was going to be Race Jam with Jeff Gordon. I would have watched that. You know, and Skate, this Jam, be... Skate Jam with Tony Hawk seems like it would have been a fantastic movie. idea. I don't know how that one didn't happen. Yeah, uh, back. To, I'm surprised they didn't contract Lance Armstrong and see they did a how, pretty how, good. How, but how did Skate Jam with Tony Hawk and Looney Tunes not happen? Like, what better athletes to fit into the cartoon? You tra- know. When Tony Hawk appears in goofy stuff like Airheads and Triple X, you would have thought he must have just slam dunk. (laughs) Exactly, pun intended. And you would have thought they would have been milking the shit out of him. But no, all I was forgot he was was, a Triple X, but it's not like he had a starring role. You're right. It's like he must have. I don't think he was hard to get along with. I think he was just hard to market and just understand the business side of things. Let alone, I don't think he was an actor. I don't well, think he could act as the big problem. There was that, and then I think it was just how to set. I think everyone was looking at other trends, like, well, it didn't work with Carrot Top, so it can't work with him possibly. But I mean, seeing him be interviewed on all these Nickelodeon shows, I knew he was a cool guy. So it was like, I don't know what. Yeah, but you could have did Skate Jam, and you could have had the other skaters with them, like 
I mean, even the lesser skaters like Bam Majera would have been perfect teamed up with like Taz. Pretty much, and I mean, you had you would think there there would Bob be Bob Burnquist more... would have been awesome to see in there with like the road <laughs> teamed up with like the Road Runner or oh, something. God. You know, aren't you glad we didn't have to see Sean White? That's who that would be nowadays. The snowboarding douche, you know, who's talented but doesn't not yeah. very nice to people. So yeah, this avoided all. You would think this would be more power hungry and. Uh, yeah, I, I would have thought. Isn't Shaq in this? Shaq's not in this. He was in Kazan. Shaq, in I think hit. Shaq, yeah, he his hit he was in track. Blue Chips, and then he was in Kazam. Wow. A movie that everyone mixes him up with um, Sinbad in for some reason. <laughs> and for some reason, I always got a sense that he made a brief cameo or voiced one of the monsters, but I was mistaken. But uh, I, and I, I know, I know that's popular, not true. I don't think his popularity. Yeah, you know was, what it is? 1996, I don't even know if he was in the NBA yet. So there you go. He's already in Kazam and doing a rap career that same well, that was, that was Well, that would have been after this, right? I, so there you go. Yeah, he's too busy doing that stupid genie movie. And this one, this just had a multi-appeal to me. So the older I got, I still watched it. I know I had cousins from San Francisco. I guess, he, played, I guess he was playing at that point. 92 to 2. He came in in 92. But I don't know <laughs> when he became... I don't know when he became a thing where it was like, yeah, be the next Shaq. Yeah, but, I mean, it, you know, so, but I know, I do know he was in the movie Blue Chips and I know he was in, um, like so you two said, years Kazan. prior. So there you go. He's yeah, distracted so he, doing his own thing. He probably he wouldn't, have, it, it's probably a good thing if I think about it, it just wouldn't have meshed well with Jordan and all the other guys. So yeah, his personality back then wasn't the fun, like, like true. now you see him, you're like, this guy's hilarious. Why wasn't he like right. this 20 years ago? He, he took a while. He, took so long getting good at what he was doing before he was like, I'm going to show you a side of me. And it's like, Jordan was always showing both sides and doing good at both. So everyone's like, he's a superstar. He's a superhero. And that's no, what I yeah. like about this movie. This makes him a superhero. It's like yeah. this real guy meeting fictional people, but mm -hmm. it just, it's a very dreamy movie. It's very widely shot. It, I'm surprised Jerry Bruckheimer or Joel Silver isn't one of the credit producers. It's that kind of movie. And uh, I instantly accept Billy West as the, voice of bugs he is just as dear to me as mel blank and all the other mm -hmm. guys because he's not only been doing voice acting for years or what feels like centuries he just had that same level of multi-talent and vulnerability i mean this introduces us to lola who you know we instantly accepted as part of that same universe you know mm -hmm. and i think roger rabbit didn't just have as big an appeal on me because the cartoons weren't shown widely you know by the 90s and 2000s so it didn't well, really... Roger Rabbit had a lot of cameos, but it really ultimately just focused on her, him, Jessica, exactly. and, and um, well, the judge, and then the main the, the and detective. It, and it was in the 80s, and so they were always just kind of playing a gamble with what was too much and finding out the hard way, oh, this is perfect for adults, but too much for kids. And this one, mm -hmm. this had everything for every this hit demographic. The mix. This hit right in the middle. Yeah. I'm sure there's got to be some of jokes for adults that don't sit well. And I mean... You know, and, you know, to have a minority as the star of the show was also really groundbreaking here. You know, I just, uh, mm -hmm. back then in the 90s, everyone thought, oh, it's a movie aimed at for, you know, black people versus white people. I was like, no, it's a movie for everybody. You know, it doesn't Are you have thinking to of be... Sonequa Martin Green for the second one? Oh, no, it, it was Lapita, is who I was thinking of. But oh, yeah, okay. but, but yeah, uh, the Star Trek Discovery Gal is connected to it. So yeah, it, it was one of those. I, I showed my cousins this multiple times. I don't think they saw much of the original cartoons, but they saw this, loved it. It just had that perfect escapism. There's different types of gags, different types of jokes. Yes, I get that this won't appeal to people who don't care for the certain soundtrack. That's their problem. Those who come complain about the plot, I think you guys are just nitpicking. This is just escapism. Uh, in terms of yeah. animation, we're just not going to agree. I think the animation is wonderful still. No, you and I all agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I, 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 I know you agree, but I, I, I've been seeing some other people. <laughs> I'm seeing some other people complain about it, and I'm like, no, get the hell out of here. They got shadowing, layering, green screen. The Monstars well. make a cameo in the Pinky and Brain episode Star Warner, Warners. <laughs> so there you go. And I think there were, if I wasn't mistaken, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, but I think they did promote it with all the other WB shows like Animaniacs and Pink in the Brain, they would have them do mock interviews or something. Maybe even, yeah, they and they, this is 
definitely by the time when everything had to have a Happy Meal or embrace commercialism. So I'm sure there was McDonald's collectibles you can find on eBay for. God, I miss those two decades. <laughs> right back when it was just more. You it, everything everything. was just meant. Everything was just fun. And, well, it was fun, and you accepted the commercial side of it instead of. You see it now, and it's just too much. Everything flops, and it's all a failure or go home. Even or if it makes money. And if you it like it, it doesn't make enough money, it's not good Exactly. Enough. And, it, and if you don't like it, you're, you're the unpopular kid. It's like, I hate that. Just because it makes money doesn't mean we like it. doesn't mean we want to see more of it. So I liked how... Now I want to watch Space Jam. Uh, well, you, you should. Isn't it on Netflix again? Probably. I don't have my VHS player hooked up, so I can't watch it. Uh, that, that might be, because for a while I was seeing a lot of podcasters within these last three years bring it up at least once. So I get that if you're just nothing is ever good enough, you're not going to like this movie. But if you're like me and you preferred the old stuff and you didn't like a lot of the new stuff, this was the perfect compromise. This, this would, in fact, you know what? Introduce your kids to it. If you got to show them something and you don't want to mm-hmm. go for all the select cartoons, show them this movie or show them back in action. I don't care. Show them, show one of the two. Now, for whatever reason, I kind of thought back in action was just a little more fun escapism, but I never saw it as much because it was just so gag heavy. And this one, this one had more of an actual plot. It had a plot and it spaced it, it out. It had plots really too. Yeah. And I mean, like you say, I, it took me years to realize, oh, that's Danny DeVito, you know, in a role, but it, well, and it's funny because it it's supposed to take place between when Jordan retired in 93 and came back in 95. Yeah, it's, it's another... So it's like, oh, that's what he was doing instead of failing at baseball. It, it, totally. It's a f- break the fourth wall and then just have some other side stuff. And having the other sports people do some commentary is awesome. Bill Murray also just kind of... He just reminds you that it's okay to laugh because he's adding his own dry sense, even though he's playing it straight and being a serious mm-hmm. role. And then, yeah, Patricia Heaton years before... Uh, everyone loves Raymond. Yeah, is briefly in here, and so yeah, it is cool just seeing. I just and all the characters have something to do when you and see the cooperation them, from the NBA to let the players all do it and stuff was pretty awesome too. I mean, and it worked. And you, some people are saying this feels like a commercial. It might be a commercial. It was a commercial for the NBA, but who cares? It, it, it at least is an entertaining commercial in terms of. Yeah. Uh, you know, like every other music video guy who's just going to have, you know, everyone tight shorts, you know, posing for the camera, just too overdone. It's not overdone. It, <laughs> Space Jam was by the Quad City DJs. I forgot about that. <laughs> right. The, Still the, did Fly Like an Eagle. That I remember. But yeah, the, the, the DJ I. guys, I've listened to that theme countless times. That almost always get gets played at a lazy Friday night dance. And so yeah, Grooven soundtracks. We're gonna have to disagree, guys. Sorry, I like it. Uh, animation. I'm on you. I'm with you on that one. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm just saying for the other ones because it's, no, been, yeah, I'm just saying, it's yeah. been getting bashed. But, but I mean, just the shadowed layers and, like you say, just the, the connectability, the everyone doing all these other side jokes and having something for the sports guys. I think that's what unites it. It's not just a sports movie. It's not just a cartoon. It's not just a live action meets crap. You know. It's not just a family movie. It's not even just a movie for everybody. It's it's as Disney as Warner was ever going to get, and it's unfortunate. I at the time, to be fair, at the time it out Disney Disney because let's be fair. Other than a few big hits from like 1980, say 80 to 2000, Disney was kind of floundering, especially in the TV world. Yeah, they they had embraced home video, and don't get me wrong, there was some cool. They were doing good in the cartoons Saturday they morning. They did a cartoons. lot of good. Um, what were the was it? What were the Saturday or Sunday evening movies they used to do? They did oh, good there. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, they had like the 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 rat pack or the rat pack or something about a bunch of army pet brat kids. They had all these different movies and those were solid. But they were made for TV movies. That was like going back to their roots when like Sandy Duncan was in all their movies. You know, Sandy Duncan. But even just God, early, Sandy Duncan. early, Anyways. early, early, early Disney Channel was even good because there was. Yeah, could it, to take it away. It was made dirt cheap in Canada, so they had time to play around with the plots and actually justify the end time. And they were fun, but then by like '04, I was like, "Yeah, okay, fuck this." Now yeah, they this started. Is, they started fading. Every parent is an idiot. Every kid is whiny, whiny, and I have to. Follow and a genius, them. right? And uh, and but movie, but movie wise, the, their this, biggest successes from like nine, nine or say '95 to 2010 were Pixar. 
right and uh, you know so up and started kicking pixar's ass and absolutely. they had to because dreamworks started coming out of nowhere like yeah, suddenly they're... dreamworks is making movies and shows as good as disney in the last 20 years right and at then... the time this was warner brothers time to shine and they did it with this movie uh, you i could not have said it better so yeah that as a worthy adversary to pixar and disney's toy story this 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 was more fun. The mustard, and I love Toy Story. I, oh, I yeah, still have oh, my yeah. original Laserdisc. I have my original Woody doll. I watched Toy Story countless but, times, but I never watched it as fucking much as. And uh, I never. Space Jam. It, it was never as enjoyable because, like, the, this didn't have that tension where like someone's gonna die. There's that, and it's the whole not movie not, is fun. It's very well scored. When you mm-hmm. take away all the other stuff, you know, it just yeah. it would mix that in with the, you know, just the over dramatic trumpets. Yeah, in a way, without being too gritty or just too cliche, it's it's still good today. It's just I would show this to any audience member; they're gonna love it. I, I show this to any. I, it's it's pretty ageless for me. It's just mm-hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry you can't enjoy it. This is just too much fun. It was man. watching NBA Jam on the big screen. Uh, yeah, and with I'm Looney Tunes only- thrown in. And you know, it really was a fun. I didn't. It didn't get as much airplay for whatever reason, but yeah, it, it had to at least be the Fox or UPN movie of the night. But it definitely came on VHS one mm-hmm. on rare and once in a blue moon. And I, I don't think they, besides the NBA sponsoring it, I don't think they ever had as many copyright issues as you know, like Mm-mm. Roger Rabbit did, which because you know multiple cartoons all in the oh same. multiple yeah they span generations to where it's still not on Disney Plus because Warner's like uh, 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 you do it so we need it too. <laughs> I don't uh, understand why the two can't play nice and just be like fine we both do it. Money, money, money. They're all desperate by and, the OJ's. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll see this is around the same time where everybody want, is starting to embrace all the serious shows and the reality TV and you know court tv for that matter and this one this even if it had been straight to video it would have been awesome it's just yeah to be fair i mean 95 and 96 were both relatively good years for warner brothers because um i know a lot this is controversial too but batman forever came out the year before and i liked batman forever it was a fun movie especially after watching tim burton's second offering which batman returns i thought was ugh it's definitely I mean, forever I thought it was fun. And then all of a sudden Space Jam comes out the next year and you're like, you know, they're doing all right here. Yeah, this is a big year for Warner. You got a time to kill, you got another Schumacher whole movie. Um, and it's just your your mind you were from the ground up invited to chase it. And I mean the musical montage, you know. Uh, just showing Jordan's career it's kind of a biographical movie in a way it's just it's like you know I'm cool yeah. so you accept him instantly that is the way to go because every other movie when they get a persona they just want them to carry the movie mm-hmm. you know at, at this time we're seeing you know every way the movie was other. as much about him as it was about Bugs Bunny wanting to beat the aliens exactly and if it had had someone like Jim Carrey or one of the weigh-ins is it just wouldn't have played as well I mean mm-hmm. you saw how Blank Man turned out that wasn't great but it just mm-hmm. was one of those is just oh, well look at still that's so bad it's good but it's it, it, this one is just and, you can take it. <laughs> and 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 this one is just you know it it sets it all up so you can accept okay Jordan's a badass basketball player He's used to playing by NBA rules. And at that but, point, the, the internet wasn't around at that point, so no one knew he was cheating on his wife with like 15 different women. And it's so weird, doesn't it? It happens in the middle I of knew, like a- I knew, a, a, I went to college with, um, I was in architecture school, and um, <laughs> it was at, I was in junior, it, uh, like a, the local junior college, and two <laughs> of the people there were managers at his restaurant downtown, and they're oh, really? like, oh yeah, he's in there like every other night with a different, with a different woman, and none of them have <laughs> ever been his wife. Yeah, trophy girlfriends, I guess is for lack of a better word. But I guess that was supposedly that was like their behind the scenes agreement was like, Hey, let me have my career. I'll make all the money. And then when we split, I'll give you money for you and the kids and everything and whatever. And I, I, so from what I've heard in the background, I don't know if that's true, but the guy did all right for himself. I barely. uh, Yeah. I mean, he, he I mean, he, he got screwed by, by his contract, but he made so much money off Nike that it didn't matter. 
yeah, some people say he was a hothead, but see, he's the kind of guy, I'm cool with him being a hothead. He's earned it because he's... If he wasn't a hothead, too, he wouldn't have got to where he was. There's that, and he's just too cool for school. It just everybody growing up, <laughs> even if you weren't watching sports, and I was never... That, that, is, a, that is a phrase that is so not your gener- generation, not even my generation. I'm surprised you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not my generation, but it is one of those where it's like I'm older and it's not mine. <laughs> oh man, no, but it, I we we both agree on number one, and that's awesome. Um, yeah, and like 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 you said, if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. Uh, absolutely, and it's not a bad way to introduce people to it. But I mean, you got to give this more credit. Out of, I barely saw the trailer. And it was just one of those, it wasn't one of the, but from what I do recall, it was one of those, it wasn't, they give all the way that all the jokes away and that's it. You know, it wasn't even too dated even. It was just the right kind of just, we got to challenge Disney and we got to catch your attention and make you want to rent it or, buy, or oh, see it. They were even so much challenging Disney as in, Hey, we have a great idea. Let's just make this. I mean, it's a rivalry that's just kind of unwritten. Dude, it's, the guy that directed it, Joe Pitka, he, he, Directed the music video for Free as a Bird, which I believe was... Uh... Yeah, Michael Jackson. No, it was the Beatles oh. song. Oh, Free as... Oh, shit. Okay, so yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Which the pecs from... Yeah. And then he deleted... Then he uh, he only directed two movies, man. But he did that documentary on Bad 25. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah, so, he, yeah. Did let it, he did Let It Ride and Space Jam. And that so, was nice. so he has a music video background. And I think this is the best way to do it. Because it did need to be this flashy. It, but it's yeah. not... It's not doing prompt, shaky camera or anything. It's just doing the more just. It's framed just like the animations. He was able to make. He was able to take his short his short film, um, experiences and make it work in the movie because that's what the movie needed, right? Like it wasn't. It needed like, to be witty. It needed to be energetic, but yeah. it also, you know, you look at this. That's why I resonate. The, the you know cut to shots they're all very calculated they are all planned out they aren't just we got the best in the editing room because i mean it was all going to be ad later in post so everybody's firing on all cylinders saying both need to be acceptable you know the endorsement it's got to be there but it can't be the star of the show i mean it's michael jordan that's already endorsement alone i and, directed over 80 super bowl commercials wow <laughs> so there you go he he knew how to make the studios happy and the audience happy he's got to get their attention and what gets your attention when you pick oh the i know show. why they picked him he directed hair jordan which became space jam hair jordan was a nike commercial with bugs and, and michael oh so there you go so they're it, like well he directed that let's just leave him you, do it you know sometimes corporations do make good decisions guys you know and because there's plenty of commercials that wouldn't be bad movies it's just they always mm-hmm. pick the bad ones where it's like, yeah, no, I already can't stand it for 20 seconds. Don't do it. But yeah. this one, to, to avoid sounding redundant, I, I do think this is a good, you should teach this in a film class. I don't give a shit. Just show it to everybody and just say, did this resonate with you? Or is it just a very fun popcorn movie? Because regardless, it is really, it's not trying. It really did hit a lot of, Mm-hmm. It, it did a lot of slam dunks it There's, was the perfect time though it was the perfect it was the perfect time it was the perfect decade it was the per- everything was it was the every, perfect storm of everything for this movie and so ironic how jordan plays you know golf because i do recall doesn't he get sucked into a golf he gets sucked through a, it, it, so he gets sucked through, a, through a portal yeah <sighs> well man it was good talking to you and discussing this one we can keep going on and on but i think we've pretty much uh, yeah no uh better say here uh so yeah the, the rankings <laughs> once again we did fantastic island tiny tunes animaniacs and we just kind of combined P- uh, pinky and the brain in there because i mean how can we not it just yeah. is part of the show and it's just unfair to have to choose one or the other and then we did a new looney tunes show and then we did quack busters back in action and then wacko's wish and then <laughs> Runner and uh uh semester and tweety and then space jam and i'm surprised they've let us go over four minutes so i'll go with uh honorable mentions <laughs> uh i'm gonna go with gremlins too and just that there, there's a hysterical Cameo, yeah. o- opening at the beginning featuring some of the characters and that that's if anything that's a foreshadow of how they of course they were gonna pick dante because he was a big looney tunes fan to do back in action so it's like but 
that one is wild because it apparently varies on the VHS and the DVD is like the theatrical cut. And even the TV version is like uses part of the VHS one, which is weird because when I saw it on stars back in the day, uh, it, I, I think it had the theatrical cut and it, it had even alternate ones like using stock footage of John Wayne and other fucking mm-hmm. shit. This is crazy. But uh, I liked it because I mean, I'm not, it's weird. I don't watch wrestling, but I watch movies with wrestlers, so I don't know where I stand in that. But it was cool seeing Hulk Hogan just stare off his shirt and say, because it's the same kind of thing. I, and I think Gremlins and all this other playful stuff, Spielberg has nothing to do with this, but I do think Warner Bros. was embracing a lot of the Amblin and other stuff. It's like, we, it's a formula that works. Leave those people alone. Mm-hmm. Get someone. And so, yes, I get that commercial directors might not be deep, as you know all these other people obviously they're not Werner Herzog but that's okay we didn't come to see an awesome Werner Herzog movie although Werner Herzog is definitely more accessible than some of these other artsy fartsy guys and arguably and this guy all these guys you know the script I'm sure much more they're much more Uwe Ball (laughs) if this was Uwe Ball he'd be having puppets uh so I, I think this works also because it it it's very diverse with the gags. Like there's mm-hmm. references, and then Lola Bunny is a welcome addition to it. But it's not like uh, it's not like Jessica Rabbit where you're like, eh, "This is a little too sexualized for kids." I'm not sure I want to show this to them. But um, right, yeah, I'm kind of uncomfortable <laughs> because uh, I don't go to I don't watch cartoons to be. Andy, why she talk like that? What? <laughs> right yeah i i if anyone who does i'm sorry I, I i do not think that way i think it's just gross but yeah, whatever floats your boat for me it's just mm, I, I go to movies to have fun and emotion and cartoons in this day and age you're better off making anti-cartoon like south park than you are just making just some other just random distortion but too many of them are also unfortunately trying to just be gross and just stupid and this one it, it, it had enough of the appeal. I'm sure there was probably 10 different rewrites of the script. There had to be. It's a major motion picture. But I think enough of the ducks, pun intended, because you know, there's ducks in this movie, but uh, I think <laughs> enough of it was in the row. And it's actually, I'll give you this, it's actually kind of cool seeing Daffy not be the hothead. He is following Bugs' lead. There's no love triangle. There's no, there's no other interruptions. Like, once Jordan leaves his real world, there's not much revisitation of that. <laughs> there is no, hey, you know, uh, search for missing persons. <laughs> not until the end when you when the the coaches are there and ESPN's there and all that. Yeah, it's it's not intrusive. It and it's by introducing all the evil, the evil bad guys don't overshadow the movie, and that's good because we came to see the guys we grew up knowing, and they're not stupid. They don't have. They don't hog the scenery. They didn't try and, don't get me wrong, it would have been funny as hell if they had someone like William Defoe or Dennis Hopper doing the voices, but no, they didn't have that. <laughs> they didn't have any stock voice actors. They just keep it very layered. And even when they're mutant and all muscular, it's not, they're not animated poorly to where, and the CGI mixing with the, you know, 2D animation is, it works also in that it doesn't look, it, the money shows on screen. And in the best possible way without saying, hmm, you know, and there's just no wasted shots because, I mean, they're working with all the cartoonists. And I'm sure that that had to be in the budget restrictions, you know, don't throw random shit in there. <laughs> we do not want to re-rate this. We want to make it just perfect. We are not going to. Mm-hmm. And it's just a rarity. And clearly someone was speaking the same language. I'm sure there were many people who were protective at the studios like, hey, you know, <laughs> we're related to some of the people here. You better make a good movie. And uh it just shows on screen for me and i mean virtually every cartoon from that wb staple has notable scenes and even mm-hmm. when they're not doing anything i mean fucking roadrunner and happy Le Pew are in this just as much even though they're not in every frame right you know, bugs is the first guy on the movie even though he's kind of the leader like he always was he's he doesn't try and steal a movie from that and that is remarkable because usually that used to always be the thing the comedian had to still Uh spotlight from the straight guy and it's like this is the right kind of balance just like 48 hours for lack of a better comparison you know and nick nolte and ed murphy it's both their movie as opposed to you know one or the other you know Uh and die hard with a vengeance 
Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, Sam Jackson is just as relevant. He, hell, even Jeremy Irons is just as relevant as. That's true. All three of them. That's good point. Right, and uh, all just and all the gags are perfectly timed. Kind of, it, it's like a checker or chess game where it, it's always a gotcha, bitch, you know, moment. <laughs> and it's like, and it's a perfectly timed gag, so you don't ever feel like, mm, you know, and. and they follow you enough on the court. Mm-hmm. So you, you can tell the animators and everybody were perfectly timing, you know, how do we make the court bigger than it is without making it stale? And, you know, we got to have mm-hmm. this kind of wide shot, you know, to establish it all. And the crowd isn't intrusive. Usually that always has to be a thing. We have to have all the stupid cliche people yelling. Mm-hmm. Spike Lee. Even. Oh hey, <laughs> I like Spike Lee and all of his stuff. I, I, I'm just saying he's always at the Lakers game. He was remember, and no, was it the Lakers or the Knicks? <laughs> oh, oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. He was always at the game, right, standing up yelling. Like, who are you? Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotcha. He was uh, at the Lakers. So yeah, we, we don't really see much of the crowd because they're not the star, and we we are the audience, you know. And so the this isn't as over the top. It'll appeal to a Karate Kid or oh, sorry, it's the guy. Knicks, not the Lakers. He's always at. Sorry. <laughs> There you go. This is a spectacle, and it's a damn not not since that one special, the Amazing Race, where Bugs and Speedy are, or is it the Ki- Roadrunner and Godzilla are in a racing match, which was a televised special? Have we seen something that's worth watching? And it's worth seeing on the big screen. If the, I think there was an anniversary special back in 2016, because yeah, that would that would make sense, uh, 20 year anniversary. But this one, you know. I think it's got the Blu-ray treatment, and I think I know I've been talking about it too much because surprisingly Zoom hasn't kicked us off yet. But uh, uh, all all these I think resonate, guys, because they they understand the characters and they understand even when their shortcomings. You know, because there was Arabian Nights and there was a Thousand and One Rabbit Tales, didn't cut the muscle for me at all. And it just mm-hmm. uh, it just very long set, even when there was barely any commercials. Uh, animation for the main things were just not inspired and just that's the reason they stuck out like a sore thumb and you can make it out it's clearly not the same because it's just not as fresh and it's not well done compared to the and they just picked lesser shorts not saying the shorts were bad but they just picked ones that just weren't cinematically as enjoyable and and this one like you say i mean uh uh it embraces the whole catalog. It's like, it reminds you, it's like the, I mean, the after credit scene, for instance, I mean, it's worth sitting through. And I can't say that about every Marvel movie or DC movie. There's moments where it's like, yeah, you didn't need to see that. You weren't missing anything. This is a mm-hmm. good standalone movie. Or of course they had a after credit scene because it's going to cut, cut into the next thing for the next movie. But this one, I mean, fucking Daffy Tweety, Bugs, and... It's probably got on Wikipedia. Who appears in the final? <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, I didn't. It didn't say. I don't think. Let me see. Da, 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 da. So, I mean, the writers were uh, okay. So Steve Ludnick, who did you know Santa Claus. So there you go, and a lot of stuff for Tom Arnold. You got Timothy Harris. Uh, who did a bunch of other animated stuff and wrote for Trading Places and Twins. So there you go, and Kindergarten Cops. So there you go. Uh, a lot of uh, Ivan Reitman's go-to guys. And then Space Jam's after credit scene was, Bug says, that's all, folks. Porky arrives and says, that's my line. Daffy then interprets and says, and attempts to say the catchphrase. However, he's pushed out of the screen by the aliens, who then say the catchphrase. Michael Jordan pushes the screen up and asks, can I go home now? <laughs> yes, that's it. All right, so... Wow. And so I think that's what works. It's just, I mean, all the other supporting actors, even though they don't have much, holy fuck, I forgot. Tom Barry, you know, from West Wing and Fast and Furious and the practice is here as Jordan's uh, uh, father. And then you got uh, Teresa Randall from Bad Boys and Oh, yeah. No, that's a, that's a huge. And she, I, I, I always forget she was in it, but I would always remember that Newman from Seinfeld, Wayne Knight was in Yeah, this, he's in there too, yeah. And that was kind of my introduction to him, so we always resonated. He was another friendly rival. And 
he along with Bill Murray just invited everybody. Is like, okay, it, it's cool just having those extra guys in there because they're not necessarily bad guys, but it's just cool having other, you know, independent people. So uh, just they appear. Oh, that's right. Broadcaster Jim Rome appears. But yeah, I said that one. It, you, you did say that, but I. It's like a brief, brief, brief moment, isn't it? I don't recall him being in there much, so thank God. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, God. So you you mentioned all the voice actors. Did any of them ever say that they got recognized for this? Like they put it on their voice reel? You know, I don't know. I didn't really. I don't apparently, know. I don't apparently this, though. this apparently was promoted during like Quest for Camelot. And so that's interesting because I didn't really watch that much. I mostly watched you know, caught parts of it on TV mm -hmm. after the fact, but same kind of deal where Warner is embracing the animation and realizing, you know, we do have to provide an alternative. And Chris Rock is one of the voices on Basketball Jones. I didn't realize that because I know I've heard the soundtrack on a few different times, but yeah, James Newton Howard did the theme and I think that's what resonates. He understands all the different tones and moods and he's fortunately still with us, but I, I you know, and he's, Name a Warner Brothers movie, which he didn't score. You know, he scored so many of them. But he he finds the right rhythm where it avoids being melodramatic. So you don't ever have just a cringeworthy moment. And even a moment where you're like, yeah, it was funnier when I was a kid. It's like, you know, it's still well played. You know, it's it's like seeing a stand-up act. And it's like ones that don't hit, you still, well done. Well, nice try anyway. Yeah, I'm going to give you those points. Because uh, considering how they had to, do another just in a different world premise and put it with a bunch of other talents and make sure the animation was right. And I mean, it, it really, there, I can't think of any really just blisters that just stand nope, out. Not at all. Uh, unless uh, if you hate this, it's probably because you just never cared for a lot of the stuff around that time. And I, I get it. There were some bad stuff during the nineties, but <sighs> I, I'm, I'm gonna nice. I'm gonna start reeling you in a little bit. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I do need to get going, but um, okay. it was great. Well, it was great talking about because it it's a great movie, and those were all great picks that we had. So yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna let you plug yourself on. Oh like, yeah, you can find us all over the place for the Attack of the Movie. Or, it, 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 that, that's all, folks. The Attack of the B Movies podcast. You can find us on Facebook, um, iTunes. I think. Um, oh my God, I, I I need to get better at this. Uh, Spotify. Woo. I heart radio, I think. We're on a few things now. Podbean. And you can, and you can find <laughs> us. At, yeah. Uh, are we on Podbean? I'm not even sure anymore. Yeah, you, you are. You just still we are. are. Okay, Podbean. Podbean. There we are. Um, so, yeah, if you if you like really bad movies and reviews by two people that don't really know what they're doing, give us a listen. <laughs> Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up review show.